I did. Okay. I am now in Chicago, oh. wishing I was in Georgetown. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Four inches of snow last night. <laughs> well, welcome. We'll get started. Welcome uh, to Enhance Your Band with Backing Tracks. Uh, my name is TJ Winters. I am the pastor of worship ministries at Concordia uh, Lutheran Church in San Antonio. I stumbled because I, I just got ordained, so I was going to say director of worship ministries, but pastor of worship ministries. Um, still kind of a new thing for me to say. I've um, been using backing tracks for uh, about a year and a half. It hasn't been that long. And so it's really enhanced what, what we do as a band. I play keys in the worship band and worship lead sometimes. And um, it's really enhanced what we do. So I wanted to talk to you guys about that and, and uh, see what you think. First of all, so who here is involved with the worship ministry? I'm involved, I mean, I would imagine. Just want to make sure everybody's in the right place. Okay. Um, so I called it Enhance Your Band with Backing Tracks because I felt like that made most sense to everybody. But I'm going to change the name right now. It's the term that, um, that most people use when calling backing tracks is, is the word stems. Um, so enhancing your band with stems. That's, that's what we're talking about. Um, so the reason it's called a stem, I, I'm guessing, it, you know, if you look at the definition of a stem, a long and thin supportive or main section of something, that's exactly what a stem is uh, for music. You know, you can have a guitar stem or a piano stem or multiple ones that, that as you're playing with the band, if your bass player isn't there, you may add a bass stem. Or you may, your piano player's not there, you may add a piano stem. Uh, I told you I play piano, so oftentimes I will actually add second or third keyboard, you know, using stems. I'll have backup keys parts that either I'll record or, um, or buy. So, I Will Follow by Chris Talman. This is a song we're going to be using. And so I just, we're going to thank you. So, um, switches over, just to give you an idea of what a stem sounds like. So that's something of just the guitar and the piano stem. Drums and acoustic. give you an example of the stems. I'm sure most of you know that song, I Will Follow, and I'll, and I'll talk to you about how to make stems and, and all that stuff, but I wanted to just to hear what I'm talking about, specifically when I'm talking about these stems. Um, you know, philosophy behind stems, there, from what I've seen, there's two philosophies. One of them is, you know what, whatever you've got, whatever you can do to make your music sound better, you want to do that. So it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's a little bit or a lot, you want to do that, and it and keeps distractions away and things like that. The other philosophy I've heard is only organic. Whatever you got, that's the only thing that can ever be played. That's all you want. You don't want to have any extra because you want to keep it as, as real and authentic as possible. Wherever you fall, you know, whatever. That's, that's fine. That's up to you. But that's what I've run into over the years. And I'm kind of in the middle, actually. So I, I love stems. I use them all the time. But um, I don't ever use a stem for a lead part. You're not going to see the band playing and all of a sudden a guitar solo comes going or a saxophone solo or a vocal solo, heaven forbid, and, and uh, there's nothing going on up there. So that's not the goal. The goal isn't to just all of a sudden play a CD and then pretend like you're playing with the uh, with pretend, you know, lip syncing, basically, or karaoke, as some people have recently called it. Um, so that, that's not the goal. The goal is to enhance what we do. Um, so first, I'm going to make a couple assumptions. Before we move on, one of them is that you actually have a music group of some sort. Okay, you've got a band, you've got you're playing organ, you're playing piano, you're doing something um, that you've got. So I'm going to assume everybody's in that. Does that include just one person? One man band counts. Absolutely, yes, okay. one man band. Um, and sometimes that can that can be really cool addition. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the next <laughs> assumption is that you have access to some basic technology, because this requires equipment, cables, things like that. So I'm going to assume both of those when I'm talking through this. Nothing is just absolutely free, right? 
a uh, couple of the requirements, and, the, and these, I can delve into these later during questions, um, but these are some of the things that require. You use in-ear monitors or you plan to use in-ear monitors. That's a prerequisite. You have to do that because you have to, with all stems, which you didn't hear in that file that you will hear later, there's a click track. There's a metronome going. And it keeps you tight, keeps you within it, but you have to have in-ear monitors to do that. Otherwise, you hear the click track going over the speakers, and everybody hears it, and it sounds really weird. Of course. Now, exactly. <laughs> now, not everybody has to have in-ears, though. I've seen setups where just the drummer. As long as the drummer's on the click, then you're fine. And that doesn't necessarily require an AVM system, even. If you've got a mixer, and you just do a stereo output of it to the drummer, and he has it, you know, the click is in the left ear, the, the, everything else is in the right ear, that can function. And it just requires a little headphone amp that's, you know, $50. So you don't have to necessarily have a full in-ear system for all the band in order to do it, but at least the drummer does, or one person does. Um, so that brings me to the second point. One of the requirements is you have to play with the click track. And if you don't right now, you need to be willing to start. Otherwise, you can't do steps. Um, we'll talk through that later. <laughs> this takes practice. It, it, it really it may sound crazy, but playing with a metronome and keeping really good time is not just, oh, that's easy. No big deal. Why? I'm always perfect in time. I promise you, you're not. <laughs> if you've ever played with a click track before, you know how in time you're not, unless you're just one of these exceptional prodigies. Um, I've had guys in the band ask me and say, it, is the click changing? Because I, I feel like we're going... <laughs> I'm like, no, I promise you, the computer digitalized file is not altering itself. It's somebody else. Um, last requirement is you are willing to make some sort of an investment. And this can be software, this can be cables. Again, I'll go over different setups. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be thousands of dollars, but they require some money. Um, so I see a lot of you writing down, that's great. I want to encourage you to do that. And write down your questions that you have so that when we're done, you don't forget them and, and we can talk about them, okay? So, giving you the basic idea of stems and, and the philosophy behind them and, and um, how, you know, what, how long I've been doing it, but before we get into actual equipment and setup and, and how you function with it, I wanna talk to you about where you get stems, like where do you get these things? You can record them yourself, that, that's one aspect. You can sit down and lay down a click track if you have software, record a piano part, record a guitar part, and use it, and that's fine. That takes time, that takes practice, and that takes equipment. Do you have a question? Uh, it sounds like you wanted questions at the end, but it would be helpful to, to Go ahead, me. yeah, that's fine. Because I've uh, never entered this area before. Okay. I just use the, you know, just the instruments that we have on vocals. So when you say stems, I'm lost. Okay, so a stem is, all it is, is an additional instrument that nobody up there is playing, and it's an audio file, so it's played by a computer of some sort. And so you, you could equate it to playing with a CD, except it's not, because you, you have control of it in a different way, and um, it's isolated one instrument. You know, CDs, the music we normally hear, is just a stereo left and right track. You can't mute the vocals, and you can't mute the drums and anything like that. So a stem is all of that stereo file actually separated out into individual instruments, and you choose what you want. Does that make sense? That helps, yeah. Okay, great. And I'll show you some of that. You'll see examples. So where do you get these things? Again, I said you can make them, and that's fine if you have the time and the talent and the equipment and all that. I don't. I make them every once in a while if I really need something. Um, but what I typically do is buy them because they're for sale on, online, especially for Christian music. Now, I haven't actually seen a lot of stems for secular music, but Christian music, uh, they're out there. And what's really cool is that a lot of these artists, while they are making money from it, which is fine, they're providing you with the original recordings, which is really amazing. It's not just some guy making it and selling it. It's Tomlin's group or it, it's, you know, anybody. There's Hillsong. There's so many things. Um, so the first place that, that I usually go is multitracks.com. I'm going to show you what that looks like a little bit. Um, Internet. We were told internet here is not reliable for your presentation, and I, I agree, especially with 1,500 people on campus. So I've got a video that I, just a screenshot I recorded. I'm going to be scrubbing through that, but that's just so you know, that's why I'm not uh, using the internet. So go to multitracks.com. 
and uh, th- it's a it's a website made by Christians, made for the Christian church, and you can search any song, and if they have it, it'll come up. So I will follow by Chris Tomlin, <coughs> and you'll see a list of songs, and you choose the one you want. They do actually have some indie recordings, so there are some songs up there that are that are put up by artists other than the original, and they're really good quality, um, but they have a lot of originals. So when you look through here, you can see it's got the, uh, yeah, Joy, can you do the lights? Thank you. I'm going to turn these on and off sometimes based on the video. Um, so you can just listen to a sample of the song, um, see the themes, time signature, beats per minute, all that stuff if you're interested in all that. Um, and then here you've got multi-tracks and custom mix. So I'm going to show you the multi-track side first. When you scroll down, this is I Will Follow, and you see drums, percussion, bass, acoustic, electric. And as you go down further, I mean, all seven electric guitars in the recording, three key, oops, sorry, three keyboards. Uh, you know, well, I don't know about you, we're a fairly large church in San Antonio, but I don't have seven electric guitar players, you know, on any given week. I sometimes don't have one, it just depends. So, um, so, that's, that's amazing, and this is all available. And so what you can do is you can download all of this. And if you buy it, so the prices are right here. It's like $39 for an uncompressed WAV file or $35 for a compressed AAC file. I personally always go with the WAV because I prefer uncompressed audio, even though audibly there's probably not much difference. But for $4, I thought, well, I'm just going to get the best file if I'm paying that much. And once you have it, you have it. So while $40 may seem like a lot, for one song, you can use it indefinitely. So as many times as you play it, in some weeks you may have a guitar player, and some weeks you may have not have a guitar player. So you have the freedom to come in here and change things around. And that's per song, not per track. Right? Per song, yes, per song. Yes, sorry, not per instrument. You mentioned compressed and uncompressed audio. Yeah. Can you explain? Sure. So um, CD audio is uncompressed audio, well, sort of. It's, it's like 50 megabytes a file, a song, for example. These are like uh, compressed, it's like iTunes and MP3. So these are the original WAV files. Or, um, so it's better quality, but larger files too. So you just pay 40 bucks, and it downloads all of these audio files in a folder, and it also downloads a file for something called Ableton Live, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, so it's, it, it's software that allows you to mix these things. But if you use Pro Tools or if you use GarageBand or anything, um, you can take these original files and toss them in the software you choose and edit and mix and do whatever you want. Copyright restriction for all this stuff, it's perfectly fine to use these. Obviously, they're selling them. Um, you, you cannot use it for rehearsal tracks. You have to pay a separate license for that kind of thing. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to buy this and then email my guitar player the part. They don't want you doing that. Um, and you also can't like repost them and cut them up and make your own mixtape and all that craziness. But the point is they're for church, for church use with your band live. Um, now the second tab you see is custom mix. I'm gonna fast forward through that. Custom mix has the same interface, except what's really cool about this, you press you press play on there and it'll uh, it starts loading all the songs. It takes a little bit depending on your internet connection because it is a it's, you know 15 files in this song or whatever it is 20 files. Um, so custom is the same is a similar idea except in this you can sit here and solo and mute things. So if you don't want the bass, you don't want the acoustic, you don't want these electrics, um, you, you're kind of building your mix online, which is really cool. So if you're not even comfortable with software, like uh, Pro Tools or GarageBand, you just mute these things, and you go, here's the, here's the mix I want. And then you just buy it, $15 for the Wave, or $12 for the uh, AAC. But that. now that's now an accompaniment track, not a... Li- uh, exactly. Okay. Yes, so this becomes an accompaniment track. Stereo track, click on the left, audio on the right, and that's it forever. You can't change it. You can't come back and log in and rechange some stuff and re-download it. That's it. That's why it's only $15. But, but there's a great, there's a place for that. I've done that for a few songs that I know I'm never going to need anything more than this one part. So I pay the $15 instead of the $40. I know what, like a, one of the Paul Below songs has like, the only stem I would want is an organ stem. I play piano fine and, and the uh, drums and it's not much, it's not seven guitars. So I just paid the $15 for the organ. Um, and that's it. And then it downloads a stereo file, and you can even choose from up to, I think, six keys. Yeah. So you guys say, well, we don't do this in B-flat or whatever. We do it in C. 
And so you can just change your key right here. Again, that's a one-time shot. Once you, once you do anything in custom mix, you pay for it and you're done. So yeah. that, that's multi-track. Go ahead. Can you change keys in the other one too then? The yes, you can do that when you download it, and you can do that later with Ableton Live. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's, it alters the audio, but I think that's all they do anyway. And you can listen. So. It, it looks like it has the whole, the whole track, not, not just a 30-second a sample, right? Mm -hmm. listen, no. Uh, you've got this dark gray. Oh, okay. And in between that, it goes multitracks.com, really loud. So be careful Make if sure you turn you it up. <laughs> What's that? Make sure you don't use it. Yes, exactly. So maybe, yes. But yeah, it's just this area, which every once in a while is, is like problematic because, you know, the seventh electric guitar may not come until over here. But. One more question. Yeah. Um, so these are for the original arrangements of the songs as well. So you can't do any type of cutting. In custom mix, you cannot cut. In the advanced stuff, yes, you can. The $40 files I just showed you, okay. yes. And that requires your own software and knowledge of how to do that. But I'll go into a little a little bit of that. So you mentioned about changing keys, but what, what do you use to do that with? Uh, if, you do, if you're not doing the custom mix, right. uh, it's, um, you can use GarageBand and, and other software like that. I use Ableton Live. Ableton. And you'll, I'll show you Ableton Live in here to, see, to show you the power. <coughs> so that's multitracks.com. Um, Um, it's a great one. They've got a lot of partners. <clears throat> Actually, I, uh, not all the bands prefer that, that their stuff does that, but I think the stu their studios, their record companies do that. I I'm, I'm, uh, talked to Newsboys one time and thanked them for doing it. The keyboard player said, oh, I hate that thing. I, don't, you know, I wish they wouldn't do that. <laughs> but it's, it's, the, uh, it's the, uh, the record label that does it, not, not the bands. But... Um, you know, they put a lot of work into it, and I think he was just a little upset that... Well, Deuce Boys doesn't have a bass player, so their bass stuff I know! Anyway. That, that's what I thought was funny. I'm like, what, what are you talking about, man? But he programmed it all and worked on it, so... Right. Um, the second site is loopcommunity.com. This site's really cool. I've, I've really grown fond of them lately. They're, it's a smaller community. It, I don't think it was originally this big, this company like Multitracks is. Um, but loopcommunity.com is more of a community. So they do actually have some original artist stuff, but there's a lot more of indie stuff. There's, there's church workers can just post it on there and sell it, post their stems on there that they create. Um, you can't use any of the original recordings and all that, but it, it's, it's really cool. So it's another resource. The stuff is cheaper, and if you find something that sounds just as good, you may as well get it. Um, so, so that's a great, great site. Um, so that covers where I get stems, and there may be other places that you guys find and know of. Um, if you search the word stems, again, that's the term that most folks are using. Um, so the setup. How's this look? How are you doing this? So I, there's three kinds of setups. Um, but you got, basic, you got from basic to advanced. And so your setup can be as simple and as easy as you want. It can be very serene, peaceful, calm, straight-laced, just going, no big deal. Um, or it can be as crazy and complicated as you want. It's a train wreck, but it works really well and sounds good. It's just up to you. And I got started very, very easily with very simple setup, and I'll show you that here in a minute. And I've just grown over the years. You know, just like with anything, when you're first starting, you dip your toe in the water, and you try a few things out, and that's it. Um, quick question, are you guys all okay if we keep the lights off? Can you see all right? Yeah. All right. Because there, there'll be a few, we'll have to go up and down. and. Okay, so three setups, real simple, basic, moderate, and advanced. Um, that's how I look at it, and I've, and I've got those three setups here to kind of show you what I think that looks like. Um, so the basic setup. First, this is the way I started, and this is the way I recommend most people start if, if you just want to test some stuff out. It's just an iPad, the cable to hook it up, and the soundboard. I assume most of you already have a soundboard because you're plugging instruments into something. So that's done. These cables are, what, you probably get them for 10 bucks on Amazon or even less than that. And an and iPad. Now you can use any tablet um, or an old iPhone or a computer, whatever. Because all this is, this is what I used to do, is I used to have um, the songs in, this is the iTunes app or the, the music app on an, I, on an iPad. And so I did is press play. And then this hooked into the headphone jack, split it to stereo, click was on the left, audio was on the right. And that was it. It was real easy. I already had an iPad, so that didn't cost me anything. Um, you buy the, the custom mix for 15 bucks, 
cable for $10, right there at $25, you have a basic setup for testing out and working with stems. Um, again, assuming somebody's got headphones on for the click. So, so that's it. That, that's the, the simple setup. I mean, the first time I did this was for Vacation Bible School a few years ago, and this is our VBS. I'm sorry, I know there's a computer and a couple iPads and a phone and whatever, but the stems are this right here. One iPad with a cable, that cable, exact cable, going to these DI boxes, which goes to the soundboard. That was my first experience with stems. That's it. So it was very, very easy, very low investment to get started, um, and no, no risk. I did it with like we, we do we do a live band at VBS, so we had uh, you know, we played over the week. We played 15 songs, 20 songs, or whatever, depending on the day, and um, I did it for like four songs. It, it wasn't a big deal, and there were there were ones I purchased, so it was real simple. Um, any questions on the simple setup, on the basic setup? I'm not going to spend too long on this because it's pretty basic. Okay. The uh, pros and cons of this one. Pros are it's easy, it's inexpensive, and it requires minimal time. Bless you. The most time you'll probably put into something like this is testing it and maybe finding, this, the, finding the song you want to do. The cons on this one is you have lack of control. It's one shot deal. And it's not versatile. So the lack of control um, with the stereo file, like you mentioned before, it's, it's like an accompaniment track. So there's nothing you can do once you have it. One shot, if you decide, if you made a mistake in that custom mix you created, you got to buy it again. So, and then not very versatile. Uh, you're limited in what instrument you can choose, again, because you have no control. So those are pros and cons of it, but it's definitely worth going that route, at first at least. So the next setup would be the moderate setup. And the moderate setup is a little, it's very similar gear. Um, now, I have an iPad again, I have the same cable again, and a mixer. So these two you're already covered on. Um, there's this, this multi-tracks company I told you about. They have an app called Playback. And the app is, is free for the introductory app, and it does basic things. But it would tie into your account. Sorry, went the wrong way. Um, But it would tie into your account. And so if you bought a custom mix or whatever, like I loaded this one. So this, uh, this is actually a multi-track from Tomlin I loaded. And you load it in there and you see verse, chorus, verse 2, chorus. It's got the, order, the song order in there, bridge. And all that's, all that's in there, you press play, and you've one, got a mixer down here. Two, chorus, two, three, four. The click, you hear? And the voice come from multi-tracks. They have that option if you want it. Intro. Two, three, four, boom. And then you've got a mixer down here on the iPad. You can solo just the drums. Turn them down. Go down here and take less organ. You know, so you can use this in a live setting. This can be your next step or your first step even in, in doing stems because you have some control. Now this requires that, that $39 song or the $35 purchase. Not you the customer. You can order it too. I mean, uh, arrange the the order of your verses and choruses and all that. You okay? That's in my pros and cons slide next. But so I'll, I'll jump ahead Sorry. for you. No, that's okay. Uh, the app is free. If you want to do, if you want to rearrange your order, it's a fifty dollar app. There's a different app that they have. So they want you to test it out and use it. But if you really want the control, they want you to pay for it. Can you flip between? I mean, um, like I use Worship Song. Okay. okay. And can you just touch up there and, and switch without making the custom order? Yes. And, then, and you can do live looping and some other okay, things. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, but again, that's the $50 app. So that the, this oh, app. No, no, This app does not allow you to touch the switch. It does. It well, don't. there's two apps. This is Playback Intro. Uh -huh. Playback Pro is the same app for 50 bucks that allows you to do those advanced okay. features. Well, worship like Song is free. Touch. Yeah. So, so there you go, Worship Song, and I've never even known that one. So there's another one um, that you can use, and that's if you're using an iPad. And there's another one that's free that has tracks that are only 10 bucks, and that's Worship Band in Hand. Band in Hand is another it's one, yep. It's not very flexible, but it's a good place to start. Absolutely. Yeah, and I haven't used them, so I didn't, I didn't put it up here to talk about it because I don't have experience with it, but I've heard of it. Okay, well, I have them on my iPad. Very cool. Um, so, yeah, so this one, now, pros and cons, going back to that, uh, this one is... Again, it's easy. It's free, 
or $50 for the app. And you do get more freedom, because as you saw, you get the mixer up and down and all that. Um, it is iPad only. It's not, t it's not a tablet. It's not Android. It's iPad only, for, at least for right now. Um, you got to pay to make those changes you mentioned, man, before. And um, it re probably requires an operator. The other one, you can press play. It's a, it's a one man band, for example, and go. If you want to make any changes on the fly, that's really hard while you got a guitar in your hand or while your hands are on a keyboard. Does that one work with a pedal? Uh, yes, you could do MIDI. Yes, absolutely. The $50 version will allow you to do MIDI control so you can map different uh, parameters to a, a foot pedal. So it, it is more advanced and there are more options. Any questions on, on that? Self explanatory, okay. Next is the advanced setup. So, or what I consider the advanced setup. So this requires a computer. I, I use a MacBook Pro, so that's what I have up there. But computer, I use a software called Ableton Live. And some sort of breakout box. And this is a USB or Firewire box that allows you to do outputs, multiple outputs. You can use the headphone jack if you want, but this, this, this is the box I use, for example, so it has uh, eight outputs. So I've, I actually send our soundboard separate stems. So I send him loops, I send him my keyboard, I send him click, um, I send him stems, like instrument stems that are not loops, and sometimes um, I may send a vocal loop. So I, I may be sending five outputs, five separate instruments to our soundboard. So you got to have a box like this. You could not do that just with a stereo headphone jack. You get your hand up. Yeah, what's, what's the difference in the features between Ableton Live and Ableton Pro? Well, there's there's live. There's live intro, live... Uh, oh, live, yeah, what's the difference yeah, yeah. between live intro and then live? It's typically more of the... Um, it's how many tracks you can have. Yeah. Um, so you're very limited. The intro is a great way to start. It's, a, it's 100 bucks, I believe. And uh, let me... I've got that pricing right here. Unless you get, get an interface, sometimes it comes well, like I have. Yeah, is that, was that light? I think uh, it's called yeah. light or something like that. So Ableton Live... Um, yeah, there's, yeah, so if you buy an interface, if you, let's say you bought a keyboard or a certain piece of software or something, it may come with Ableton Live. I think it's called Lite. It's a very basic version of it, but it's great to get started. Then I think there's Intro, is 100 bucks, uh, And then there is the middle one. I forget what that's called. That's what I use. And then there's Suite. And Suite's like 1200 or something. The middle one is like $600. Um, somewhere in there. And... So the difference you're asking there is, is tracks. So in the intro one and the live one, you can only have, uh, golly, I think it's like five tracks or ten tracks or something like that, um, and, and different scenes. And I can show you scenes later. But so, so you're limited by how many. But you could do like three or four instruments to get started. What, uh, what, what's the name of that, of that interface you said? This, the one I use is a Motu. Motu, uh, Motu Ultralight. Yeah, M-O-T-U. <laughs> M -M uh, I use the MK... 828 hybrid, I think. And it has a USB? Yeah, it has USB and Firewire. Okay. And I use, I, the, the Mac I use only has two USB ports. And so I have to use a hub anyway because I've got two keyboards and stuff. But, so I like it because the Firewire connection will power it. The USB won't. You have to have a power cord if you use USB. If you use Firewire, it'll power it for you. And I love that. So I just plug it in, it's ready. And again, in your sound system. I know that's redundant. Uh, I wanted to show you a picture of what my setup was this for Christmas uh, this last year. We do a we do a uh, Christmas pageant every Christmas Eve, and so I show you this to give you an idea of, of I showed you the one where I started with just an iPad, and then this is what I use now, and so I've got the computer is running Ableton Live, which is this software right here, and this is my keyboard software next to it. Um, I use a keyboard controller, and I hardly. Well, not hardly, but most most of the times I'm not playing this keyboard. I use these buttons up here and these buttons over here to control Ableton Live to control the stems. This is the one I play for some things, and then this is a this is a piano we have that I use for the pageant. And so you can see there's my there's the Motu right there. There's a USB hub because I've got two keyboards and, and a hard drive and other things. And this is the Avion. So that's that's what it's turned into over the years. But it, again, it wasn't always like that. Um, so now I'm going to show you Ableton Live and go through the, the power of the software, what it can do, and uh, how we use it. 
So this is I Will Follow. This is one of the $40 tracks that I bought from Multitracks. And this is what Ableton Live looks like. As you can see, you've, it, it, it comes like this. So when you buy it, it comes with an Ableton Live uh, uh, project. You don't, I didn't have to put all this audio in there. It just came, which was great. It's so much easier. Click track, the guide track, which is that lady counting off. <laughs> Drums, percussion, bass, acoustic, those seven electric guitars, piano, organ, keys, one, two, three. Um, so there's a lot of things in there. And you can, ex you know, you hit the drop down and you can expand it out so you can see the audio. And, um, let's look at the guitar seven. How often does that thing play? Not very often, just in the courses. Uh, so, I mean, basic software, you just. It even comes with BGVs and tenor. And so, if I solo one out, that's Tomlin singing. You love our love, how you serve our serve. And if that's the only stem I wanted, if I needed some backup harmonies, you just do that and export it out, and you got Tomlin singing with you. I don't usually do vocal stems, but you can. You can. It's up to you. Your church, your, your ministry. Um, but so really, you just you come in here, and the, anything that's orange, that's on. And, and if you've ever worked with a DAW, a digital audio uh, workstation, Software like this, you, you kind of get the basic, basic premise. You got solo button, you got on and off button, you got your wave, you can cut stuff up. Um, all digital audio software does that pretty much. Somebody have oh. it, sorry. No, yes? How much are you actually messing with this during the service? None. On your laptop? None. That's what I you're just it's it's done ahead of time, yeah. Okay. During a service, I'll show you what mine looks like. There's another view. This is what I use during a service. Starts to click. I've What's cool is that this is how I do it, so I can see the, the, the flow of the song. And then if I want to do something else, if I, there was a time I did run this just without playing an instrument. I just ran it by, at the soundboard, and that was kind of fun, so I was able to change if I needed to. Um, the cool thing about Ableton is that it doesn't, if I'm going to fire this chorus or fire, you know, start this chorus or verse, it does it in time. So if you hear that click going, when I hit go to verse 2, it doesn't go until the beat hits. So it stays in time the entire time. So if I'm starting a song, I count off to the band one, one, two, I just press play, four, that's the organ going. I got these tracks muted, sorry. It's all the time. So if I want, I can just do that organ every time. It's flashing, so I'm on the one, three, four. If I want, and it's perfectly in time, sounds like it's part of the track. Because it won't fire it, and that's a setting you can change if you need to do it for some reason, but it just, just plays. And so I usually just do pads, or I'll do like uh, instruments and, and percussion or loops. I separate those two out so our sound person can control that shaker if he wants to independently. And then I'll throw organ and keys and everything else together. But you hear that click track, it's going all the time. I'm going to turn that off because. Joy doesn't like it, but I, I office next to Joy back there, and she knows when I'm working and editing because she hears doop, 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 for hours. Yeah. Does Ableton read Reason tracks? I don't believe so, no. Reason is its, its own thing. Yeah. And what are the numbers on the side under the master column? Uh, those are, those, those can be whatever. That's just when you, it's just a new track. So it's, it's an arbitrary number. When you create a track, it just numbers it. Insert. Now it's 14. But I, I usually relabel these, you know, call it whoops, chorus, and so I can see that stuff. And I'll show you a picture of a set I have a little bit later so you can see. I, I'm very particular about these. I'm not the most organized person, but when it comes to this, I'm very particular about the organization, the color scheme, I mean, everything. I'm kind of crazy. Do they make any kind of a foot pedal <coughs> trigger? Or Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Ableton is very powerful. So it's actually called Live. Ableton's a company. So it's kind of like calling Word Microsoft. You call it Ableton, but most people do. So if I saw if I call it Ableton, I apologize. But uh, Live has can receive all sorts of MIDI inputs and, and whatever. Um, so if I go into the preferences here, since you asked that, um, so I've got virtual inputs, which are just computer inputs that are for computer to computer communication. Then I've got all these other network inputs and, and outputs, and those are just added on my computer. But you can add a foot pedal. Uh, again, I showed you that one keyboard on top. I only use that to control live. And so I can play, pause, start, next, stop, all that stuff. 
but it can even receive software MIDI control. Um, so you can have another piece of software tell it what to do at the right time, and it stays in time because it's all on a click and, and all that. So it's, it's really... Does this have a... If we didn't have a laptop, like, on the stage with this, is it possible to use a phone Sorry. or an iPad as a remote for this? Yes, yeah, it's... it's uh, I don't find it quite as reliable. There, there is a phone app. It's not made by them, though, which is probably why it's not as reliable. But there are things out there. There's uh, something called... I think it seems to work pretty well, actually. Touch OSC. Touch and then the three letters, OSC. I think it's like six bucks or something for iOS. But it, it allows, it, you just map it. Now, the difficulty with it is that it requires you to put the work in, because it's not made by Ableton. So you have to say, I want this button to do this. And you actually create your own buttons. You can create your own layout. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, but yes, there's a lot of control. Another one is, let me find you this other one uh, that, I, that I do use for rehearsal. Um, well, if I have it, man, I'll have to look at it. Oh, yeah, live. Uh, L-I-V. L-I-V, and then control with a K. Live control. And they've got a free one. that you can, And then you put a little companion program on the computer, and it pairs with Ableton. Yeah, you can use it. Um, so this is a different view. This is what I use. Actually, what I found, most people don't use this view. They like this other view, this arrangement view. That's what this is called. The other one's called Session View, and I don't, I don't know why, but everybody loves this one. So, cool thing with this though is this is where you can cut stuff up. So that that original audio you heard, I cut that up in this song. So you, I'm starting on the chorus. I press play. I cut a line down here, and turn down almost everything except for two tracks. And so you can just edit your audio. It's non-destructive, just like most audio editing is. Um, it's it's very advanced. I can't go into all the features of it, but it, it, it does a lot. Um, so like in this view, same thing before. If I click on a bridge, three, four, boom, now it goes. And those are all assignable. You can just assign it to a MIDI thing as the next, or it'll just play through the whole thing. And you can loop stuff. And so it's, it's a very functional piece of software. It, it's... I'm, Learning more and more every day. Um, I'm going to try to keep you guys on time here, too, so you can get to your next sessions on time. Um, can, oh, yeah, go ahead. Can you still change pitch after you've cut it up? Or yes. Okay. So once you have it in here, and again, you've got to learn the software to learn how to do certain things, but... You can, you can, you can change the tempo of it, uh, change the pitch. Um, Basically anything you want to do. So if I grab, uh, <laughs> well, let's, let's do that to the vocals. Um, so if we've got his vocals right here, let me make sure that's warped. Yeah. So I'm gonna solo that. You change tempo. Now I'm doing it drastically. And that click is from their sound system here. So you can change the drums and ch there's plenty of times we never change it that drastically, but we'll go. Um, it's a you know, even a little slow. Can we do two clicks faster? And like, Absolutely. And when you put it up here, when I use a session view, whatever you name it right here, that's how it plays it. So 96 BPM. Yeah, let's try it at 98. You know, <coughs> boom. And now that's saved my file. When I hit go, it starts my click at 98, and then I hit go here, and then it starts the whole song. And it just pitch as well. I know you. I know you didn't say. Tempo, you said. Oh, no, that's great. But, um, cut this up, and yeah, so you can grab this and put it back to 96. So this is probably where the, four, the, the extra $4 pays off, is some of the sound quality. Right, well, well, only if you're using four. Well, it, if it sounds bad, it's partly, yeah, but exactly. If you're doing some cut-up stuff, um, I, yeah, again, if you're going to pay for some limit, yeah. So vocals, again, are funny to cut up. That's why I chose those. But if you do it with the drums, it slows down real well. It's, it's, it's amazing. Very powerful. Um, so I've even taken this and uh, make sure I've got that. This is a set I used for pageant, um, Chris, uh, Christmas pageant. No, this was VBS, I'm sorry. This was VBS last year. 
the first thing I showed you with just the red keyboard and the iPad stand, that was VBS like two years ago. Um, so it's very powerful. So I've got, I programmed our lights through Ableton Live. I programmed our drums. We have an electronic kit and uh, to help with noise and stuff. So I, I decided when I press play on a song, it goes to a certain lighting cue and it goes to a certain patch change on my, my keyboard software and it changes the drums to a certain patch. And all I gotta do is click one button. And I say go, ready? Here we go. And then everything just goes automatically. And then when you hit go on the next one, beginning one, two, three, four, boom. Start playing that song. All these things in this row happen together, which is why I use this view. And they play through the whole thing and it changes the lights at the right time and it changes the drums and it changes my sheet music on my iPad. It's all automated. That's what I choose to do. Most people may not want to get into that programming, but I love it. So I'm not distracted when I'm playing. I'm not doing a bunch of things when I'm playing. I'm just playing, and it all just happens for me. And it's not perfect. This, the iPad one's giving the biggest trouble of changing my sheet music, but I have a foot pedal that I can just do it with if I need to. Um, Will it also output to ProPresenter Pro or something like that? Yeah, absolutely. You do have to have the MIDI module for ProPresenter, but uh, Rise and Sing, that was a song we did. Do I have it here? Yeah, ProPresenter. So on Rise and Sing, we play to a video lyrics. Instead of playing to, instead of having somebody run the lyrics like we usually do for slides, we were playing in, with a pre-made video. Well, you got to stay in sync with that. Well, we got the click covered. We'll do that. But then how do you get the video in time with you? What I've done before is I've, we've made a video in church, and we had like a, a scripture at the beginning. And I practiced and practiced. And when that thing starts to fade out, hit go on the stems. Or hit play on the keyboard, and then I'll probably be pretty close in time. You know, and try to line that up manually to where this just shoots over the network and I hit go and it starts the video and we're all in time and everybody's happy and there's no problems. The techie in me is saying, well, you're putting all your eggs in one basket here. Have you ever crashed and burned? Nope. You are absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So you could split this up into multiple computers. Um, <coughs> the, I have a redundancy because I have, the, the, way, the software I use is MainStage. Anybody familiar with MainStage? Yeah, so I use main stage for my keys sound. The keyboard I play actually is not putting out any sound. It's the computer with that breakout box. And so it's main stage software. If the whole thing crashed, right off the bat, the, and during VBS at least, the lights would have been where they are. The, uh, there'd be no more stems. We'd still be in sync with the video because it doesn't change once you hit go. And, but I'd have no piano. But I have a second, I have the, actually the output of the key, actual keyboard going and I just switch over to that. So I'd be down for like, 20 seconds. Assuming you hit go on the video before it crashes. Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> and you're right. It's yeah. always possible. But we rely on that all the time. I'm relying on my computer right now to give this presentation to you. And without my computer, I wouldn't show you anything. You know? And so, but trust me, it makes me concerned. I am very thankful that over the years, the MacBook Pros that I've used, I've never had an issue with that kind of thing. I've had plenty of other issues. But with crashing during a live performance or session or anything like that, it's been great. Well, you mentioned your uh, mm -hmm. monitors, do mm -hmm. you have any suggestions? <clears throat> I don't know a whole lot about those. I use uh, a Sure, they're like 100 bucks or something, to give you an idea for the monitor. Um, our worship leader actually has molded in-ears because he sings more, I don't sing as much. So to get started, you can use headphones, you can use iPod headphones. It doesn't, you don't have, again, I, I want to encourage you that if you want to get started, don't be distracted by this. I want to show you this because I want to show you where you can eventually go if you want. But if for the rest of your life, your drummer plays with head, iPod headphones, a little headphone amp, and a $15 audio file, you're good to go. It sounds great. And the goal is, again, to make it sound better, to enhance what you're doing uh, so that you can sound better. And I, I don't have a budget to hire those seven guitar players, you know, but I'd like it to sound pretty full. So if I can pad it a little bit underneath, uh, I'm good with that. So any questions on, oh, sorry, scrolling down. I forgot about that part. Mm -hmm. More songs. <laughs> Are any of these places selling? I, I know that the reason I asked about Reason is I know Surprise Charts and Loop Community are selling Reason files. Yes, but they I do. But so I like, I, you know, I've heard more about the live, but if live won't open the Reason files, then I'm wondering, is that the way to go? If you have Reason, then definitely not. Well, I no. don't have Reason. That's my problem. Okay. Uh, the thing about, I, I think Reason's, I don't fully use, I don't use Reason, but I, if I understand, it does some, some of this workstation stuff, but isn't it more of like synths and patches and stuff like that? Does anybody use Reason? 
I believe it's more of that stuff. It's more of creating your sounds. And that's actually what shied me away from it because it scared me. It looked really complicated when I saw it. I'm like, oh, God. I have to take this. Don't, go ahead. So there's definitely other formats and stuff like that. And she's right. Loop Community, which is one of them, one of those sites I talked to you about, sells Reason files, I believe, too. I don't use Reason, so I've never needed them. But they sell all the audio files, and you can put it into GarageBand or Pro Tools or whatever you use or Ableton Live. So any other questions, anything I need to clarify, you know, kind of data dump right there, but. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, I think, I think we see the price of like $39 for a multi-tracks file with all the ways and it's, it's everything you need. But that's, I mean, I might play, I might have a worship set list, not in, not in one worship time, but, you know, a whole set list of 30 or 50 songs. That's it's very expensive. incredible investment. How do I... Like I think, I think it's worth it. How do I get my church on board with that and say, yeah, we're we're gonna push some funds your way to make this? Happen? Sure. Well, there's two things. First of all, I not every song needs it. We don't use stems on every song. Partly, there's work that involved to create that for every song. Secondly, sometimes I just do want it to be the band for a specific reason. Um, but for as far as budgetary things go, I would say if you can, do it once. Test it out and show how good it can sound. And say, this did you hear that? Did you like that? Yeah, that one sounded really good. Say, okay, well, here's what I did to do that. What do you think? Can we help? Can we do this twice a month? And, and build it up. Again, you build a library. Now I've got a huge, but it's it's taken years, and I asked permission and said, was told no sometimes or whatever if I couldn't do it. But um, I would say take your time with it and start small. And honestly, if it doesn't sound better, then don't do it, for sure. If, if it's like, hey, did you like that? What's the difference? You didn't hear the difference? No. Hmm. Okay, maybe it's not worth it in my context. You know? It may not be. Yeah. The question I have, because we, we just got a new sound system, and uh -huh. we've just come to a place of using the sound system for the first time with the church on that. So we, but I, I'm, I'm sorry, with the church what? Started out with the church that all they played was organ. Oh, okay, gotcha. Then, then they took. We came into the church and they asked us to bring them up a few notches. So now we've got a praise band together. Okay. But what would you suggest? Because I'm familiar with computers and all of that. Mm -hmm. I've played around with programs before, but just on my own. But to do what you're talking about is what would be the pre-basic, the, the basic, for, to get to get started on this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I think the. To get started would be the basic. There, well, there is one more thing that I, I didn't plan on showing you guys, and, but I can and will. Um, and this may help you. What's your name? I'm sorry. Dave. Dave. This may help you, Dave. So I have to find out where we got these because our worship leader got these. He bought this pack of pads. It's uh, worshiptutorials.com. Worshiptutorials.com. Okay. Net. It was like $10? Uh, I, think for, I think it's 14 for the majors and 14 for the minors. They're okay. Oh, I need to get those minors. Okay. Anyway, yeah, they just came out. <laughs> so they're they're uh, yeah. And well, I've had this for yeah. same similar thing, right? Yeah. So this was well, he said fourteen dollars. Again, I'm sorry I didn't buy these, but I got them. My worst week. I didn't steal them. Um, this is it. So the key of B flat or B. This is B. I'm sorry. You don't have to use Ableton to use these. You can just use your iPad and play this. So. It's the fifths, there's no thirds. And so when you're playing, I, I use this almost every week. I just fire a pad and then I underscore some stuff. So I know what key I'm in. So when I'm playing B and then I go down to, you know, F sharp and E and whatever, it holds the B root and it works in F sharp as a, as a suspended, it works in E as a fifth. And so it's great, it's great. What would you use this for? So this would be cheap, $14. One man band underscore to start off with. He he asked, where would you start even below the basic? And I throw some pads in there. It'll go. It's a twenty what, minute audio file. Using that, I don't get it. I'm sure. Sorry. No, that's fine. So during during a song, you're just playing this. Well, I don't. No, no, no. That that's too That's too much. I, what I do. So we do underscoring. So when uh, the pastor's praying, or sometimes okay, at the end of the sermon. You, yeah. But I play with speaking. it. And, I, and what I also do is I put this in all, every list. I don't have it here. But when I, when I change between songs, um, I have a foot pedal that I can fade up these pads. They're always playing during the song, but they're muted the whole time. 
And then when the song's over, instead of that silence, I just turn it up and I let the pad fill the space for a little bit. And it creates a segue either between songs or gives me some stuff after my song to let it go so I can get, I can get settled real quick. Um, each file's 20 minutes. So you should be able to be fine with 20 minutes of underscoring. <laughs> Um, <laughs> That's something else Worship Song will do, is that it will crossfade pads in your list. Yes. So that and that's, that sounds very cool. Uh, my question is, does any, do you or does anyone here, I know I understand there's time involved, but you mentioned the problem of some of your guitarists not showing up, so what do you invest in the time to take and create your own background tracks or stems? or Only for my own instrument. Only for your own. Does yeah. anyone else do that, and, or is it worth it? I personally experiments with it. I have. I'm not using multi tracks at my church because it's. It would take a lot of convincing to, for me to be able to do that. But unless you're used to recording and being very on time, right? Okay. It's an extremely time consuming yeah, thing. I mean, I I would consider myself decent at time. And everything, everything I, I would use a keyboard to input stuff, but I'd be dragging everything because yeah. no matter how good you are, chances are you're not going to nail it. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I've only done it when there's parts I really wanted, and it wasn't out there, so I just created it. You know, and most of the time, if it's not out there, I don't create it. It's just too much time. Okay. So and that's that's why buying it. I think found with the the MIDI side of thing, like. You said you use the keyboard stuff. Like I'm a guitarist, so I lead by guitar. Yeah. I have the pods. <coughs> yeah. And yeah, we that use that too. Allows me. I actually, I've done reading up to figure out how to do it. And you can actually program it to use. You can use the pod for sounds, but you can also use it to change everything within Ableton mm -hmm. too. Okay. Or vice versa. Yeah. So I told you on that on that one huge set I showed you, I changed the drums. Well, when the drummer's playing, he can't go. <laughs> yeah. You know, because I, what I want him to do is go do do got do do yeah. and then boo 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 boo. You know, a little fun '80s thing in the middle of a song or whatever for the kids, and he can't do that on the fly. So I had to program it, and it did it automatically. Just do it once, and it works. Like if anybody watched um, Lincoln Brewster, the their last run of Christmas concerts, as an example of the capabilities that it has for switching, they ran their whole concert off. And off of yeah. Ableton, they, I mean, they had redundant rigs, but right. everything was done that way. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd like to look into redundant rigs. That's a, and that, that's a point you brought up. I don't know. I mean, I don't, we don't have the budget to just go buy a whole separate stuff, <laughs> yeah. but I would like to see what that looks like. How, okay. What do I do? I mean, you don't just have a second keyboard set next to you. So what's that look like? Yeah. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, because Ableton can control Ableton. And so you can have a second one, and it's timed over the network and the clicks. and so It's, it's very fun. Um, we've got to wrap up here, but one thing I did want you guys to see, you've got it on your, um, you've got, those little, you got a little card on your table. Um, and uh, bestpractices.church. So this is a site that we have at Concordia that we created just for this conference. And so we're going to, we've got... <coughs> We'll be putting up materials up there. Like right now, it's just a welcome and an intro to the to the course because I didn't want everything up there. But I'll put the stuff up there, and then on the back of here and on the site is my name, TJ Winters, and uh, email address. If you have any questions, you can email me. More than happy to shoot you some links and, and troubleshoot and figure some stuff out with you. But if you lose the card again, bestpractices.church. All right. my info and everybody's info is up there. Okay. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate Thank it. You so much. Thank you.